So a constrained function is a function f of x, y that has limits in the values of the variables based on a relationship between them. Here we have our second example. It's a utility function listed below measures the satisfaction gained from buying x1 items of good one and x2 items of good two. So here we have our utility function. And we're going to sketch the indifference curves for when utility is 5, 10, 15, and 20. We're going to sketch the graph over the range 0 is less than or equal to x1, which is less than or equal to 20. So now we're going to get back into drawing level curves. We have this function of two variables. We're going to draw the x2 versus x1 relationship. We're going to rearrange this equation to be able to draw the level curves because we're going to be using level curves a lot from here on. So to draw the level curve, the idea here is that my utility is going to become constant. We're going to treat this like a constant and we want to draw the graph with x2 on the vertical axis and x1 on the horizontal axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to isolate this x2 variable. So we're going to redefine the equation. We're going to do a transposition. So I have u is equal to 2 x1 to the power of 0 0.5, x2 to the power of 0 0.5. So to isolate my x2 to the power of 0 0.5, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 2 x1 to the power of 0 0.5 on both sides. So now I have x2 to the power of 0 0.5 is equal to u divided by 2x1 to the power of 0 0.5. This could also be written as half u x1 to the power of negative 0 0.5. Um, next thing I need to do is I need to isolate the x2. So I need to eliminate this exponent 0 0.5. So how do I do that? How do I get rid of the exponent 0 0.5? I'm going to raise it to the power of 2. So I'm going to square it on both sides. So this becomes x2 is equal to u over 2x1 to the power of 0 0.5, all squared. I can apply the square to each of these terms. It's mm -hmm. going to be u squared divided by 4x1, like that. So now I have x2 as a function of x1. Remember that this u value is going to be treated like a constant, and we're going to do this at u is equal to 5, 10, 15, and 20. So I'm going to do this in Excel. I like graphing in Excel, though you can do this by hand as well. I've already kind of set up the spreadsheet for the benefit of time. We're going to address the constraint later. I'm just going to ignore that for now. What I've got here is my original u function, and I've got my x2 function that I, we came up with. I've got a listing of x1 values here, and then I'm going to do this at various u values. The question said to do this when u is 5, when u is 10, when it's 15, and when it's 20. So now I'm going to solve for the x2 value when u is 5. Do you guys see that? I'm going to create a column here for x2 values for when u is equal to 5. Let me make this bigger for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my u value of 5 and I'm going to square it. Then I'm going to divide it by 4 times, and I put this all in brackets, everything that's in the denominator I'm putting in brackets, 4 times my associated x1 value. So I'm going to use the x1 value of 0. So I clicked on the 0. What's the problem right now? Why did I get pound divide by 0? You can't divide by 0. That's right. I tried to divide by x1 of 0. It's really telling me the problem. So while the question said to do this from 0 to 20, I cannot do this. And I'm going to end up starting at, let's go with 0.1 instead. What this is ultimately going to do, we'll see later, is that it's going to form an asymptote next to zero. Okay, so I got my first x2 value. Now if I drag this down, I'm going to run into problems. And the problem is that I'm referencing these two cells, and if I move down, 
they're going to move as well. So what I need to do is I need to lock in my, my utility. So I'm going to do that by locking in the row. Dollar sign behind the row. And then for my X1 value, I'm also going to lock in the column. And then I can drag this down. And I've got all of the X2 values. Now, because I did this with good cell referencing, I can just do this for the other U values as well. You can see that this column references this U value, and it still references these X values. This column references this U value, and it references these X values, etc. And I'll be sure to put in a copy of this Excel sheet in the Learning Hub so you guys can take a closer look at it afterwards. So now to draw the level curve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this table and I'm going to go insert and I'm going to put in a line graph. So I put in this line graph right here and I've got my level curves. You can see different levels here. I can change the formatting, etc. And this is what I will get for my level curve. If I yield it vertical to 20, horizontally to 20. I also change the labeling in my graph that I have clearly labeled where my U is equal to five, where my U is equal to 10, the line in which my U is equal to 15, and the line in which my U is equal to 20. There we go. That's how we would create the level curve.